You're up. You're up. Sir, am I audible right now? Yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Yes, we'll start. So we'll start. Huh? <coughs> so a uh, very good afternoon to all of you, dear colleagues and the research scholars, uh, for taking interest uh, in this KY series. Today we have the seventh talk by Sakthiran Jamdas of as Western Professor from the Department of Commerce. So my special thanks to our faculty members because today I can see there are many research scholars, those who have joined. So thank you so much for taking my words so seriously and inviting all your research scholars uh, to join today's uh, talk. I'm sure that, of course, all of us will be benefited, but it's more so for the research scholars. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would request the research scholars, if you have a common WhatsApp group, Please make me also, if you don't like, uh, if you if you like that way, uh, you can just make me a member so that I can also pass on information uh, that is beneficial to you. So if you feel like, you just make me a part of that, so I can directly pass on these kind of links to you also. So if research scholars have a group, uh, please do that. So uh, I'm really excited to see many of our research scholars today who have joined. Uh, I'm sure that today's session is going to be very useful for uh, all of us. Now, as you can see, uh, this talk, uh, is all about uh, analysis of bibliometrics. Now, this is, I think, the initial stage of anybody's research. Because I still remember when I started doing my research, my guide would ask me to go to the, uh, go to the library and uh, and uh, uh, browse through the uh, the stacks and look at what I have read. And slowly, the research topic emerges. But okay, different people follow different models. Uh, sometimes the research, uh, the guide gives a topic and asks the student to uh, look for the related articles. That's one way. But uh, it, as you can see, in many of the institutions, uh, the guide would never talk about uh, the exact topic. He just tell you the area and give you some tentative idea. And then the student is left to himself or herself to really uh, break his head, to go through articles here and there and convince the guide that this is the topic on which I'm going to work. In fact, it so happened in my case, because I had to choose my own topic. So during that process, you learn a lot, because you read varieties of things, so you get a very good exposure. And I think uh, that's the right way to start. But afterwards, when I started uh, guiding, in most cases, I'll be giving a topic. Of course, I'll also allow the students to read and come, out with his, uh, come up with his own uh, areas of interest. Because this is very important because unless the student loves the topic, if he, feel, he doesn't feel that the topic is close to his heart, uh, he, he or she will not be able to work it because he has to work on that topic for four years, five years or even more than that. But therefore, finding out the right kind of topic and the literature that is available in that area to know the state of the art in that particular area is very, very important. And today's topic is uh, geared towards that. It's going to help you the 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 starters, those who are starting their research career, or um, even people like, like, like us exploring new areas for research. So one need to know uh, what other people have done. And this tool that he's going to talk about is all about that. So I think uh, I'll shut up here, uh, pass the baton to uh, Sakti, so that he starts with his talk. And in between, of course, we can keep interacting. So once again, I would request all of you to please keep your mics off. Uh, till then, or if you have a very uh, disturbing questions that without that, without clarification, if you are not able to move forward, probably you can stop and ask. Otherwise, you can always skip till the end of the talk. So it's over to Sakti. So thank you so much, uh, Sakti, for choosing this particular topic. I, I know that when you suggested this topic, I said this is not your area of research. And then uh, later on, when you gave me a write up and you discussed mutually, I found that this is really interesting for. Uh, the research scholars. That's what uh, today you are talking on this particular topic. So thank you, uh, Sakti. Let's all thank uh, Sakti for his interest to talk on this particular area, uh, uh, on this particular topic, which is of uh, everybody's uh, interest. It's over to uh, Sakti. Please thank go you. ahead, sir. You thank can you just sir. introduce yourself and go ahead as usual. Thank you, sir. So, sir, let me first share my screen. So is my screen is visible to all of you? Oh yes. Yes. So thank you, sir. Uh, you have already introduced. You can, can just go to the slideshow mode. 
press yes. F5 so that is bigger. Yes, sir. Sir, sir but uh, as I want to show, what is the next slide coming? So I think this this node may be quite. That is okay, Pak. Okay. If if you are comfortable with this, it's okay. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, uh, thank you, sir, once again uh, because you have already introduced me. So again, I introduce myself. I'm Shakti Ranjan Das, working as assistant professor, Department of Commerce, Barampur University. And a warm uh, good afternoon to all of you. First of all, I want to express my gratitude uh, to our university authority, as well as IQAC cell of Barampur University, particularly uh, the honourable vice chancellor of our university, Professor G J Chakravarti sir, and Professor Manas Ranjan Patra sir, the IQAC director, for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my understanding on the bibliometric networks. And uh, I strong, I will try my best to uh, uh, meet your expectation, and uh, I try my best to make as simpler as so that it will be uh, add value to the resource scholars understanding and as well as the academic fertility at large. So with this, uh, I am going to start my presentation. And uh, initially, I want to show that what is my plan of my presentation. So my entire presentation, I plan to divide into three parts. In the first part, I basically focus on the overview of the bibliometric analysis, particularly what is the bibliometric analysis, why, and when we should apply this bibliometric analysis. In next, uh, I will uh, demonstrate how exactly we can extract the data for the bibliometric analysis. And uh, in this section, I try my best to make a comprehensive uh, different databases like mainly Google Scholar and Scopus databases through which we can extract the bibliometric data. And finally, I will show that what is the visualization of bibliometric net uh, networks. And uh, for this purpose, I choose two topics. One is uh, small and medium enterprises in India. So what are the research on small and medium enterprises in India? So I will do, I will demonstrate a visualization on that topic. Accordingly, the scholars can be choose their own topic and they can do the same in their uh, respective topic also. And at the same time, I also demonstrate what is the uh, bibliometric analysis of Barampur University. What are the top authors of the Barampur University? What are the research trends in the Barampur University? So that also I will uh, demonstrate. And all this demonstration will be uh, conducted uh, through the Boostware software. I will introduce about the Boostware software also. So what do you mean by the Boostware software? How you can download that? What are the uh, basic functionalities of that software also? And uh, this is my presentation outcome. Uh, I strongly believe that uh, uh, after my presentation, uh, the participant may be aware about what is bibliometric analysis, why bibliometric analysis, and when they should apply the bibliometric analysis, and how they conduct the bibliometric analysis. So, as we all know that uh, the starting of every research starts with literature review. And we are also trained traditionally when we uh, took a research methodology course uh, in our uh, graduation or post-graduation or MPhil or PhD course uh, that we taught that uh, we start first reviewing the past work or the earlier work. And I also think that it's uh, essential because uh, when we review the past work, we can able to understand what the work has already been done and what not. So that we can avoid the duplicity and identify the knowledge gap so that we can contribute something more which enrich the existing literature. And uh, just like I am completely agree with Professor Patra sir that uh, there was a days I also heard from my professors also that uh, they are sitting hours in a physical library to review the hard uh, board articles and to summarize it and make a uh, analysis of that and find out the research gap. And in the 21st century, we are not only confined to that uh, traditional way, but also we can also expose to uh, our digital library where we can get millions of literature within just a uh, single click. And accordingly, the approach of that literature review has been modified. And uh, there are a couple of approaches in which we can review the literature. And uh, due to time constraint, I am not going to focus on each approaches of literature review. Particularly here, I am highlighting the three major approaches which are quite popular in social science domain uh, in which we can make the literature review. So one is your systematic literature review, which is uh, shortly known as SLR or abridged form is SLR. So in systematic literature review, we review one by one all the literature and we understand what the work has been done. We summarize it and we can identify the uh, gap, uh, what is the gap we have uh, not, we should uh, do that. And uh, but the thing is that uh, this uh, systematic literature review is uh, we cannot apply when our number of articles is thousand or uh, more because uh, we are following the manual content analysis. So even if we can do because of uh, constraint of time and it will take 
huge time to complete that, uh, compile all these articles. So systematic literature is not uh, suggestive if you are doing dealing with the thousands of articles or more than 100 articles. Then there is another approach also meta-analysis. So meta-analysis I think quite popular in our business domain in the last four to five years and I, 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 I believe that that can be also applicable to other domains also. In meta-analysis what we are doing that we are analyzing the statistical results, the numerical results, the numerical values of different papers, let's say regression result or correlation result or the descriptive statistic result and you compare the results of one paper with another paper, we identify the patterns, we identify the groups and this meta-analysis is also done through a software known as NBO and some new other softwares also there and this is also quite helpful uh, to particularly the scientific papers or the uh, mathematical or the econometric paper where we can able to analyze this kind of meta-analysis. Uh, but our today's focus is bibliometric analysis. I, uh, 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 I feel happy to say that this bibliometric analysis also solve the problem which the SLR has that is the limited number of articles. Bibliometric analysis has a power to deal with a numer numerical articles, more than 100,000 paper it can at time summarize and people are using SLR and bibliometrics both. I will also show you that how we can combine the SLR and bibliometric both and we can easily analyze the different paper which help us to uh, produce a good number of paper as well as to choose our research topic. So my idea of uh, saying all these things is that we need to understand that bibliometric is come under the umbrella of literature review. So it is a it is an approach, it is a method to analyze the literatures or to review the literature. With this I will move to our next, that is what do you mean by the bibliometric analysis? What is bibliometric analysis? So as you see in my slide, the bibliometric analysis basically divide uh, into two words or derived from the combining the two words. One is biblio and another is metric. Biblio means books and metric means measurement or you can say is a book measurement. In more simplified way you can understand that bibliometric is a method that includes statistical analysis of published literature and citation uh, in that uh, literature to measure their impact. And uh, we might have know that this bibliometric analysis is actually not new, it is quite old enough but now it is completely new in the uh, new domains like uh, other domains and you can see the library and information science are using this bibliometric analysis is quite old days. But nowadays it's migrated to the other domain and it's quite trendy in other domains also. Now to uh, convince you that how bibliometrics become more popular in other domain, I have some uh, collected some statistics and to show that. So this is the data I have collected from the Journal of Business Research uh, of uh, Elsevier and you can see that the, the popularity of a bibliometric paper. So uh, in the entire world, in the domain of social science, you can see in 2005, there are 170 papers which are published in the Scopus uh, index databases and right now we are it already tossed 1950, so close to 2000. So it means we can say that the bibliometric pop, uh, paper uh, quite often become uh, popular in our social science domain also. At the same time, it is also not confined to social science domain, you can see uh, other domains also. So you can see bibliometric analysis of fiber optics, I think it may be the physics or other domain. And you can see South Asian Journal of Botany also, they have published a paper like role of South, uh, like a bibliometric approach. You can see that the bibliometric uh, study of taxonomy of botany, it is also bibliometric approach. Descriptive and historical review of bibliometric with application of medical science, it is also a bibliometric approach. Bibliometric of uh, alkaline uh, chemistry uh, research in India, that is also bibliometric and this is also a journal of Aravedan journal of chemistry where we can apply the bibliometric analysis. So now I think we are quite convinced that so the bibliometric is not uh, exposed to only library science, it's not only to social science, we can apply this bibliometric analysis in other domains also. Uh, so with this uh, importance of bibliometric analysis, then the question comes why we should do bibliometric analysis. What is the benefit I will get as a research scholar, as a researcher? The answer is quite straightforward that uh, if you do the bibliometric analysis, we can able to answer the following question. The first one is that we can able to identify who is the, what is the most influential publication in a research field, who is the most influential author in a research field, are, the, uh, are there any uh, thematic clusters are available? Uh, here thematic cluster means the group. I, I mean to say that 
suppose i am doing a research on a uh, covid 19 let's say so the covid 19 uh, in a commerce and management domain we are also doing research on impact of covid on the stock market on the marketing and at the same time the uh, another people also doing research covid 19 on the uh, uh, on the medical science and other domain so each one is one one cluster so we this bibliometric also help us to identify what is the sub group of that topic and what is the uh, community of that group and it also helps to identify what is the broad theme and what is the recent development has been done in that area what are the main keywords in that research field uh, how many countries are doing research in this topic which country is most active and which one is the least is there any connection among the authors uh, between the different countries or different uh, uh, authors of that uh, particular field what are the main branches of a particular research field and which institution is more active in this research field so that if you find there suppose varanpur university is but active in particular research field the researcher of other institution may be uh, pay attention to our university we can make a collaboration we can collectively work also so that also help us to uh, solve all this problem apart from that uh, it also helps to study about the productivity of an institution an individual and a discipline for example uh, for example barampur university suppose we want to present our university in terms of research to certain authority or so let's say government or some agencies or even if we prepare a annual report uh, in that suppose we need to highlight what is our research trend and what are the total number of uh, articles we have produced so far who is the top author and uh, what are the countries in which uh, uh, our uh, authors have make a collaboration already made a uh, collaborations and uh, what are the other institution in which our authors also working with uh, them so like that this kind of uh, analysis also we can do in bibliometric analysis so it also helps to access uh, assess one of the productivity of an institution and last but not least we can also nowadays produce a top tier journal through by following only bibliometric analysis i don't know about the other domain but uh, uh, in our commerce and management domain uh, i have seen that the proper papers of high impact factor and uh, particularly there is a rank like a b d c so in their a star or a uh, category paper also being accepted e p o paper is also being bibliometric uh, analysis based so that way so now people are some authors are also using this bibliometric analysis to publish in a good uh, journal or top tier journals also so i think we are uh, uh, quite clear that why we need a bibliometric analysis then question comes why we should use that bibliometric analysis when uh, sorry when we should use that bibliometric analysis and uh, i think i have already told in the beginning that is a part of a literature review and literature review is always uh, conducted at the beginning of a research so it is suitable uh, at the time of when you start your research when you start exploring a new topic Uh, you can use the bibliometric analysis even if you are already doing some research suppose you want to connect some other field to your research topic so you need to identify what are the dry areas where i can connect my topic so in that case also you can use a bibliometric analysis uh, for your uh, research next is uh, how to conduct bibliometric analysis so uh, as you know that bibliometric analysis is a, a process and every process there is input and there is a output so in the bibliometric analysis also we are following the same principle we have some input that is known as your bibliographic data and after that we analyze it we process it uh, like citation analysis co occurrence analysis which i'll going to cover in the subsequent slides also and finally we get some output uh, that is called your bibliometric networks so that is the main uh, theme of our discussion so how to collect the bibliographic data you can see that uh, bibliographic data mostly we can derive from a paper right so here i am demonstrating one paper so you can see that uh, in that paper uh, one is bibliographic data point is your journal name then followed by the title then is your author uh, and then author's institution and country uh, like year of publication keywords what are the abstract and references and number of citation except uh, number of citation almost all bibliography data you can uh, that uh, get from the your paper but number of citation we can only get from the databases where or some uh, indexing uh, uh, databases only so where you can get the number of citation only so these are your bibliographic data 
and once you get the bibliometric data then we move to the bibliometric analysis or the processing of bibliometric data so broadly we can say that we can analyze the bibliometric data into two broad way one is your performance analysis or metric analysis and second one is your science mapping or network analysis so i have highlighted this science mapping or network analysis because this is our core area of uh, discussion and because uh, if time will permit then we will migrate to other areas also but performance analysis is what i will give you a brief overview of that here we just uh, highlight uh, some major uh, metrics like what is the total publication the number of contributing authors what is the co author publication like that the uh, total number of citation collaboration index like this you can identify through uh, this uh, data and you can present it in a tabular manner and we can summarize it also and uh, the most important part is that we identify the network so in the network analysis that can be segregated into different parts one is your citation analysis then co citation analysis bibliographic coupling co word analysis and co authorship analysis also so let us uh, discuss one by one what do you mean by the citation analysis what is co citation and so on so citation analysis as you know that citation means we are acknowledging uh, another author or researcher who has already done the work we may be uh, uh, agree with that uh, author's work or we may be disagree so we put a acknowledgement so that we can avoid the plagiarism as well also we can give indication of that also so when you cite one paper that means uh, it can be assumed that there is an intellectual linkage between the two publications and uh, when you cite so when you get citation analysis we can able to identify what is the most influential publication or who is the most influential researcher through this citation analysis this citation analysis also segregated in two parts one is your co citation analysis and another is bibliographic coupling so what is co citation analysis so co means we all know that it's together so in co citation analysis we can say that the two publications we can say they are co co cited if there is a third publication that cited the both the publication for example you can see that suppose x is a public author uh, who has a document as uh, a literature and y is another author and z is another author who cited both x and y or in simple language we can understand when one reference both the authors particular uh, taking place then we can say they are they are the co cited so here x and y are co cited so the larger the number of publication by which two publication are co cited the stronger the co uh, citation relation between the two publication and it also helps to identify the thematic cluster that means if one paper x and y like that they are more co cited so that means the x and y are correlated so that is one cluster another author cited j uh, let's say p and q so that means p and q is another cluster so in this way we can identify the different cluster and who, from which we can analyze also coming to next uh, let me change so coming to next that is your bibliographic coupling so what is bibliographic coupling it is the opposite of co citation so two publication we can say they are bibliographically coupled if there is a third publication that is cited by both the publication so you can see the example uh, in the bottom part i have given suppose there is a x uh, as a author and y is another author x cited z and y cited z so we can say that z is another third author which is common in both x and y so in that sense we can say x and y are bibliographic uh, couple or they are the bibli and this analysis known as the bibliographic coupling means so suppose i am cited one author you are cited that author and most of the time those those author i am cited those uh, author also you are also cited so we can say that our work my work and your work is uh, quite similar so we can say we are a bibliographic couple so if it is similar we are coming under the same cluster so we can say these are the thematic cluster also like it is in co citation in there is only one or two cited the both so the larger the number of references uh, two publication have in common the stronger the bibliographic coupling in relation between the two publication so that is called about your bibliographic coupling next one is co word analysis like your uh, uh, co citation analysis we can say the co word analysis is uh, analysis in which two words are related if they are placed together in a literature so if a literature both the words are uh, most of the time occur together then we can say they are 
covert the co- they were doing with the co- covert analysis so what is the word the, the word means i am talking about the author's keyword or the word from the title or the abstract so we can make a covert analysis also so it also helps to identify which keyword is most researched because often uh, from the keyword we can identify one of the broad uh, area of that topic so if uh, one keyword is maximum time occurred in a particular field i can say that that uh, aspect that the dimension of that area is mostly researched so we can identify that through the bibliometric analysis and we can identify which combination of keyword is mostly used so that which keywords are least used we can identify the research gap so this is also helps to identify the research gap uh, through the covert analysis another is your co-authorship analysis so what do you mean by co-author analysis uh, in co-author we are analyzing the interaction among the scholars in various research field or the same uh, research field what are the how our authors are interacting how they are collaborating with each other and uh, we know that uh, collaboration is a formal mechanism suppose i am author you are from another author the same field we can uh, discuss and we can make a collaboration work so in this analysis we can also analysis that what are the collaboration in which institution are mostly collaborating to each other which are the country which are uh, collaborating each other so we can know that what are the cluster research and uh, we can also study that what is the different time frame what the collaboration uh, uh, has been made suppose in one period of time this is the collaboration has been uh, quite popular or quite uh, have been conducted but after certain period of time this collaboration is migrated to the another collaboration so we can understand that pattern through the bibliometric analysis also right so i think uh, with this i already uh, uh, narrated what do you mean by the bibliometric analysis and uh, how, how we can analyze the bibliometric analysis what are the analysis of uh, through we can make the bibliometric analysis now that uh, the question comes we know what is bibliometric data we know that how what are the analysis we are going to do but where to get some data so we can get the data from various sources as already uh, highlighted some of the major sources like mendeley google scholar scopus web of science pubmed dimensions skyval and microsoft academy so the thing is that we can only get the bibliographic data from that sources where the database is designed to provide the bibliographic data the metadata and the no, higher the number of they are providing then it is uh, beneficial for us to analyze the bibliographic analysis and you can see here i have uh, cover the two uh, the three major uh, aspects one is your mendeley another is the google scholar and is scopus so mendeley uh, i think uh, most of are using that i have using from last five year so it is a reference manager it is a good reference manager where you can systematically store our article which helps us to review the literature though it is not uh, quite uh, uh, comprehensive like scopus databases but from the mendeley uh, uh, databases which you have created you can also do some bibliometric analysis also and similarly google scholar also is a free providing a scholarly literature we all know that we can also uh, take some data from google scholar databases and scopus it is a premium database it require the subscription also but it's providing a very a good number of bibliographic data which we can use for our bibliometric analysis so these are the three i want to demonstrate uh, just uh, uh, in our discussion that how we can collect the data then so far software is concerned that there are number of software now uh, has been uh, developed to analyze the bibliometric analysis like bibcel uh, you can see site space uh, nvivo max uh, qda like lot of there but uh, due to uh, friendliness and open source i choose both via software that we after getting all the data we will uh, analyze through the both via software now as a time for demonstration how we can uh, do bibliometric analysis and how we can extract the data from the mendeley database so here i'm not introducing what is the mendeley what is the functionality of that because if you do that that will be another session just straight forward uh, i'm directly going to the mendeley window if you have uh, using mendeley uh, or you have stored you can it is also open source software you can see that this is the mendeley desktop you can download it uh, from the mendeley website and it's a really good uh, software where you can use it so once you click on the mendeley you can see this kind of window manas sir uh, is it visible ha uh, ha visible 
yes sir yes sir so uh, in mandley you can store your papers uh, manually and you can read mandley has also own advantages uh, but uh, for the time being i am just showing you how you can extract the data from the mandley database so once you open the mandley you can see this kind of window there are different folder you can create if you click on there you can add a folder where you can uh, store just like your desktop you are storing your articles in different different folder you can just uh, uh, upload it or uh, you can import uh, various literature which you have downloaded from your mandley databases and once you download it you can extract the man uh, database uh, extract the developed data from the mandley databases so for example i have created a uh, folder let's say working capital management is one of uh, my research area so there is not uh, quite large number of article i have downloaded but still i have downloaded some article this is for illustration purpose only you can take your own way to download or import the article so once you store the your article next step is how you can go to uh, extract your data so you need to control press control a in your system that means you selected all the articles from the that particular folder then you go to file then there is a option like export right so i am repeating that so first uh, you open the mandley you import some paper to your mandley uh, database or for the better understanding if you are working in multiple work then you can create different different folder so that your work will be segregated according to different uh, area and after that you have to select uh, all the articles which uh, you want to uh, analyze through the bibliometric analysis then go to file then there is the export so in export there it will ask you some different option how you want to export so there is option like bib text so mandley is accepting uh, mostly ris the screen sharing has been stopped screen share has been stopped so let me check it, it, it is there uh, you can just find out uh, the display and then you click on that somebody was trying to share his screen that's how there was a confusion okay you, you can share your screen now okay sir it is visible now yes Okay. The one who was asking, are you able to see? Okay, catching. Uh, this is also not visible. Yeah. So I, I, let I me stop see. there and do again. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is that will be fine. No, you you but can I, you can pin you can pin to Sakti's screen. It is visible actually. Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. it was already there in between somebody tried to share his screen so it went off and his screen came and then again it came back so you find out uh, sakti yes, screen sir. so we we'll click on that but it was visible i think sir now it is visible i stopped there and again sir yeah. yes 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 okay thank you sir so you have so need to those are it. not a see please please search the side bar and wherever you see the sakti screen your presentation screen you click on that is that you use it's there on the screen thank okay, you now sir continue continue yes sir so you select all the papers and go to export once you click on export it will give you different file format but i will recommend you choose ris research information system format ris file so that uh, that, that uh, file will be uh, accepted through your bosbel software so ris then you can choose the place where you want to save suppose i selected desktop and it is the name of my collection for example then save that's all so it is as simple as but uh, what is the limitation of this database is uh, taking the below data is that it will only provide these like authors data title year of publication published journal and uh, maybe keyword analysis but it is not provide you data regarding the citation analysis the uh, institution like that uh, it may not be uh, able to read that so we cannot make a very good article from this uh, uh, mandley databases but at least we can try uh, through the mandley databases those who have not access to any good database so another is that google scholar we all know that uh, google scholar is also a good database so here we can uh, do our bibliometric uh, we can uh, most of the time search our article so let me uh, go to google scholar
so i have already open that so you can search any topic and uh, the thing is that while searching the article also it is also a tactful ad you can say you need to train yourself also there are different uh, boolean operators are also there through which you can search your article so that because your entire analysis depends upon your uh, quality of your data and if you collect right number particle then your analysis will be really meaningful and uh, getting the right kind of article depends upon how you can search so right approach to search your article help us help you to uh, get the right kind of data so uh, there are number of approaches you can just uh, read uh, from a library science domain or you can read uh, from any good research methodology book that different boolean operator or how to solve the data uh, for time being i am illustrating a few of that suppose i want to study covid 19 and uh, let's say and so, so when you searching and you have to write in capital word one then it will search this word along with that word. when you put colon it will exactly search so i will give you a small illustration with that suppose i'm writing covid 19 and stock market you can see the difference suppose i am getting 127000 uh, around the results but if i put bracket maybe it will be reduced further so you can see 436 results so that means it will exactly search covid 19 and stock market article so most of the time research scholars just put the covid 19 in stock market they get millions of data and uh, they uh, quite confused that so already this kind of article done but it is not like that google will search anywhere anywhere covid 19 and anywhere stock market but when you put the colon it will exactly search so like that suppose i get number of article and uh, accordingly you can search your your area then you can see that there is a star button and provided that you have a google scholar account if you have google scholar account then only you can store it in your library so those scholar don't have any google scholar account you can open a google scholar account it's completely free but it's uh, uh, require maybe some institutional email id so you can approach your college or your university to get a institutional id you can open a google scholar account so like that suppose you search one article uh, title or keyword you can also use or operator also you can use not operator also so i'm not uh, discussing go in that because if we focus on that then our time will be less for a bibliometric analysis so like that you can search so once you search you get number of article in your area so you put star mark so once you click on the star mark what will happen it will add it to your library so like that you can put star mark suppose uh, for illustration purpose only because uh, the list is long uh, i am only for showing that this way you can uh, read the articles and you can uh, import it to your library then it is you go to library you can see there is a library option my library you go to your library once you go to library it will show you what article i have selected so earlier i have no article in my library that's why it is uh, showing all the article which just i recently added so you can select all also if you have other articles then you can select accordingly then there is option like export again it is when you going to export it lands me different file format with text in note reference manager and csv here reference manager is same as your ris file which i have uh, exported from my mandalay database so you can click reference manager then with few in second you can see there is a like citation uh, like name it is already blinked in my task bar so i can show in my folder and i can move it to my desktop so that i can easily able to find it right suppose this is my mandalay database and this is all their txt file and, and this is your google scholar file hope it is clear 
now these are the three uh, two three uh, way you can uh, get the bibliography data another is your scopus databases uh, the thing is that scopus uh, most of the good journal they are accepting the bibliometric paper if you have done some reliable and some good uh, you collect the data from the good databases so for that uh, we required a scopus database or web of science uh, like uh, the good uh, databases and uh, i uh, i need to say that uh, uh, we are also not actually subscribing the scopus database in our own university so one of my friend is working in another institution in uh, his institution the scopus database is already accessed so i give request to him he is uh, one of the co author in my many articles so i told him that uh, you uh, collect data on my own behalf so and i will demonstrate it so you can same way you can approach to your friend who is working in the institution or you can write a formal letter to the uh, librarian and if you will permit you can visit their physically to their library and you can collect the databases also so here i am sharing some screenshots which i have taken uh, while uh, collecting the data from the scopus so that you can learn the procedure and same way you can repeat when you have uh, access to scopus database so this is the uh, first window when you go to the scopus database there is a three option documents author and application so document means you are searching uh, a youtube uh, put any keyword so they will give you the documents author means if you particular author wise you can search you can application wise also you can search so suppose uh, i want to search uh, a particular topic so suppose my research area is small and medium enterprises in india so i need to search in different keywords because some article they are using sme some article using msme some article using maybe sme full and sme sme so that's why i am writing suppose you can see that uh, sme or small and medium enterprises or it may be sme star so once you put star means it will take smes it will take sme it will take sme or something extension it will take into india and along with india and i put india uh, so that i will get the smes in india so like that you can search in your your domain uh, you can go on searching and you can get your topic so once you put uh, i put uh, that then what is the result i got initially 4989 document but it is not necessary that all documents are actually relevant to my research and actually related to my research area because it may be uh, giving some other uh, topics also or some other documents also so i need to uh, take uh, further care to filtering that databases so i can manually read uh, the headings or title i can filter it out that is one way another is that the scopus is also providing a good opportunity to filter the data so if you go to the document type like articles conference paper review paper book chapter the list is quite uh, long you can see but the time being i want to review only the articles only the full text articles which are available in the uh, scopus database so that's why i put it on the articles only so it of, depends upon your research idea and your research approach you can select and accordingly you can reflect your uh, bibliometric paper also then uh, there are a number area subject area also which are uh, uh, using the same sme so some uh, maybe a medicine domain for me it is a sme means small and medium enterprises for another domain it may be some another sme abbreviated may be used in other purposes so that's why i need to filter in my research area that's why i hit on business management and accounting social sciences and economic uh, econometrics and science so these are the way you can filter it out you can filter in the country wise also you can filter in the year wise suppose you want to review from particular this year to this year uh, then you can also filter it as for the time for here i am not uh, using for time uh, uh, wise uh, uh, filtering out so this way once i did all the things then what is the result you can see now it is reduced to 746 document so you can see that drastically there is a filtering of out again further also you can check one by one and you can see if there is a uh, other article which are already included in your list you can filter it out also so once you filter it out then what is the next step next step you can also use one of the benefit of this scopus database that there is a option like analyze the search result you can see just uh, below that there is a analyze search result if you hit on that you can also get some analysis which uh, bibliometrics is going to do so scopus also providing some kind of already analysis like you can get what are the your trend of your uh, research 
So like you can see that uh, SME small and medium enterprises uh, publication started in the Scopus database from only 1970 and the number is quite less but from 2000 uh, around it is quite increasing and now it is this is the trend of this analysis. So you can easily identify from which year our my research area has been actually geared up and uh, from which year now what is this current uh, trend whether it's a upward trend or it's going to reduce. And if you see that there is a breakdown, you can also theoretically justify that why there is a num less number of literature are there. So it depends upon your research area or research or domain knowledge, you can give that analogy. Similarly, Scopus also providing a good opportunity to see who is the top 10 author. You can see these are the top 10 authors and there is the number of publications which you have already published. So you can get from the Scopus databases. Similarly, you can see though I am select India, that's why it's saying the India. And these are the collaborating country who are already work in the uh, through the India like United States. You can see this is the highest country. Uh, is the this is the highest number of article which produced produced by the United States followed by United Kingdom like like. So you can see which country is not actually worked much with the India. You can make a collaboration that maybe you can find some way to publish the article like China, Australia. You can see also. Similarly, also Scopus provide uh, who is the topmost journal and which journal actually publishing more. You can see uh, like International Journal of Productivity and Quality Management publishing highest number of paper like 19 like Journal of Cleaner Production, Benchmarking, Textile Outlook or M. Emerging Market Case Study. You can identify your paper also. You can identify the sponsors, uh, funding agencies also who are funding agency on your topic so that if you plan for a project you can uh, target these uh, funding agencies because already this uh, funding agency has funded and this article published on backing the funding of that uh, organization. So you can identify, so it will also help you to target your funding agency easily. You can see the like Department of Science and Technology, National Natural Science. So like that Indian Council of Social Science Research, ICSR, ICSSR, like University Grant Commission, the, you can find also that uh, opportunities. And uh, one thing is that if you are not satisfied with the graph which is provided by the Scopus, you can represent at your own way through the Excel or in your Tableau or other software also. There is an option like export. So if you export it, it will export you CSV file or some file whichever you want. Uh, I recommend you use, uh, export it to CSV file and you can represent at your own graph and you can easily uh, show in your paper that this is the top tier journal or uh, what is the top funding agency as per your convenience or uh, your own graph. So this is all about analyze but main uh, thing is that you need to extract the bibliography data from these articles. So for that you need to select the article here I selected all. Once you select the article you put export. Once you put export then it will ask you that what are the uh, bibliography data you want to export. So I want citation information like author ID, author, year, sources title, citation count, publication stage, DOI, open access or not, affiliation, you can see author, abstract, author keyword, index keyword and certain databases also providing the scope for future study day also. So that also you can also access if that database is providing but right now Scopus is not providing that and the important that you can include the references also. So by this way I already collected the data for the uh, these small and medium enterprises uh, research in India and I will demonstrate how you can uh, do bibliometric analysis through this databases, right? Because uh, if I use the demonstrate you from the Google Scholar databases or mainly because just now I have shown the data may not be adequate. I will show you but that you don't uh, uh, take it as a benchmark because the data quite biased because I am not properly review or co properly filter out all these databases. Now once I got the data then I need to switch over to my software where I can make the analysis. So one of the software uh, in which we can analyze that I already told that is a VOS Bear. So VOS stands for Visualization of Similarity. So VOS Bear is a software uh, is a creating maps for networking data and for visualizing the exploring this map. And uh, it is a Java based data you can see that and it is a completely open source software. So I will show you what is the uh, data, what is the website you can able to easily download the data. You can simply type the Google post here, then it will make you this window. Then accordingly your version you can, according to your operating system or your system you can easily download. So it is a completely free software you can download and you can make your analysis. That is the beauty of this post software. So once you uh, 
download the software the download also not quite complex you just put yes mark and you do some check uh, option then it will easily installed in your laptop so once you install then you will uh, and open the uh, boswell software you can able to see this kind of database so let me introduce you what are the basic window of the bibliometric you know, boswell software so i will divide uh, i have divided this entire database into five uh, major part the first one is your this is the window this is called your uh, main panel where we can able to analyze all the bibliometric uh, analysis so we can visualize second one is your information panel where we can uh, see different kind of information third one is, uh, what is your information uh, sorry second one is your option panel where you can use different option and third one is your information panel so if you want to particular click on mouse on particular point you can identify which journal or what is the citation all the entire information which are already exported from the scopus so depending upon your analysis it will uh, highlight you and four are is uh, it is a overview of your visualization what is the broad overview and fifth one is your action plan where you can take the first action and uh, let me then go to the boss viewer software so uh, right now i think it is visible to all of you this is the software is it visible yes yes so you can see that this is the action panel and this is my uh, option panel and the uh, bottom part there is information panel it will only highlighted when i put some data and this is the overview panel and here also you can see there are three types of visualization option are there one is network visualization another is overlay visualization another is density visualization So in network visualization, I uh, you can see what are the network has been formed by taking all this bibliographic data, and in overlay visualization also you can get exactly the similar kind of uh, visualization in the like in network uh, visualization. But the thing is that in overlay visualization, the further advantage is like you can see the time frame or different uh, metric wise, like citation wise you can see the visualization, you can see the network. or you can say impact factor wise also if your uh, database is providing that information and in density visualization you can see which is the more prominent and which is not more prominent so there are three kind of visualization you can make from this post your software that is network visualization overlay visualization and density visualization now let me show you how fast you import your data through this software then what are the various functionalities through which we can make a uh, this uh, visualization analysis so let me see that has go to create there is option like create if you go to create uh, let me tell you uh, one interesting fact is that suppose uh, right now i'm saying you are going to forget whatever i am discussed you can easily learn all the things there is a manual so there is a free manual you can read and you can also know what is the step by step you can do what is the basic meaning of all these functions you can also understand so you can get all the notes and material about the boss your software from the manual and about the boss where if you click on that it will directly give you all the materials now how to uh, import the data first we go to create once you create it will give uh, show you a dialog box where there are three options are available the first option is that create a map based network data second one is create a map based bibliographic data third one is create a map based on text data so it will ask me which type of data i am going to import whether i have a network data or i have a bibliographic data or text data so as i am using a bibliographic data so i am not going to select this one either i can select this bibliographic data or i can use the text data so for i am using this bibliographic data because you can see this option to create a co-authorship keyword co-occurrence citation bibliographic coupling and Both citation my best uh, data, so that's why I'm selecting this. Once you select, then it will tell you to put next. Once you put next, it will also further ask you that where, uh, how we can read that. The software need to identify where you get your data. Whether you collect your data from reference manager or from some other uh, software like Microsoft Academic, like that, or you collect the data from the Web of Science, Scopus, Dimension, or PubMed. So according to the software has already been designed, it will able to actually decode what are the already uh, uh, databases providing. So right now I'm showing you that uh, Scopus database because we collect the data from the Scopus database. So that's why I select the first one, then put the next. Once you next, then again it will say that to import that file. So here I need to select Scopus by default. Web of Science is already selected, so I need to switch over to Scopus. 
then select the file where i have already stored it so let me give me few second where i have selected the already file so now you can see so suppose this is my data then accordingly i will put okay then put next then it will read the data it will give few seconds maybe my laptop is sometimes quite slow that's why it is some taking some time so i hope it will uh, read uh, as quick as possible so <clears throat> that okay in the meantime uh, uh, the database on which you are analyzing yes sir now now this database contains only data from scopus or data from all sources like from google from scopus and uh, yes sir, yes, sir. Any, I, got, any other I got your question sir uh, there are two ways one way that uh, either i confined only one database another way i can merge different databases i can uh, also do so for time being i am only showing uh, one database and uh, right now i am showing only the data which i have collected from the scopus database Okay. because uh, i get a huge number of data that's why it is easy to visualize that's why now why i ask this question because in all these three sources the yeah. format in which it is stored can be different yes, so is it yes. possible to combine them together and create a single database yes sir it is a possible but uh, there is some another approach we by which we can combine okay, so okay. like but which i have never seen that combine the google okay. scholar or like scopus but most of the co-author they are working on uh, merging the web of science and scopus both the databases because uh, to avoid the, and they need to also another uh, steps to remove the duplicity of the data both the databases and yeah, yeah, that's yes 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 so once you create then you will get again finally you get uh, this kind of window where you have option to make different kinds of analysis you can see one is your type of analysis one other is your unit of analysis so first one suppose co-author analysis i want to analyze the co-authorship on the basis of author so here i can get know who is the top author in my uh, field or who is the highly cited author that also you can also identify so let's select co citation co author type and author then click on next it will ask you uh, some filter or some threshold limit it depends upon you uh, as per your uh, research idea or your research methodology you need to filter it out and the same thing you need to report in your bibliometric paper also for example here i am saying that minimum number of a document uh, of document of an author it is 5 by default it is 5 you can reduce it or you can enlarge it depending upon your uh, limit so if i choose one author at least five document so how many authors sir so out of 1327 authors you can see 32 meet the threshold it's quite less so if i reduce it uh, further three then i can say there is a 85 meet so here i am not uh, getting citation completely zero you can if you further use citation at least the author should get at least one citation because citation is uh, represent the quality of your article so you can put uh, citation also then i put next then it is saying that here i will get a again dialog box where also you can also use it like your metric analysis which i discussed in the beginning so like it is showing me all the authors documents there are citation there are total strength so this strength has been derived by applying some statistical approach and this data also you can export if you click on write then there is option export the selected authors you can export there is a text file you can comma separated file and you can get the exact the data and you can show further graph or you can so uh, as a table in your article right and uh, you can also select suppose some authors you you find that the same name like suppose uh, shakti ranjan das another i have wrongly uh, article i have some sr das so you can avoid the duplicity also you can remove this uh, du uh, duplicity by unchecking that also and you put finish so it will ask me so, some 84 thing on network is not connected in each other the largest set of connected items is 33 items 
so out of this 83 again the connected authors are 33 do you want to show the set of items uh, uh, set of items instead of all item so i put yes because i want to know those author who have interconnected if you want to see all the uh, authors then you can put no also super so timing and clicking yes once you put yes then you can easily see that so you can easily see this is the network uh, and to make it uh, more uh, prominent you can use this uh, option panel so i want to increase my scale you can use this so you can now see if you want to more so if you want to use the background change the background you can put click here black then you can it is more prominent can you can you just interpret this graph uh, yes, sir. I, uh, yes yes sir yes sir so let me first show the different functionalities then i will definitely interpret so this is the frame also you can see so as you see that while visualizing a network the three things are important one is the size of that uh, label another the distance between the two labels another is your color here size represent the occurrence uh, is there an echo sir echo is happening okay. so size represents your occurrence the higher the number of the size become more larger or bigger you can say that the number of occurrence is quite uh, more and the proximity of these two labels uh, this is uh, known that they are closely related or their work is closely related with each other and the color dip, uh, represents different uh, clusters so that means i can say these authors are belong to the similar kind of work and this is also another author this color is another uh, uh, similar kind of work this is another work another work and this is only one so he is the author who is there is a quite few author so now from that you can also identify what is the work and you can see that there is a gap whether there is a gap is available with this so you can make a uh, you can find a research gap you can do the work suppose i want to know uh, that is the prominent author is appearing because uh, comparatively bigger you can see once you click uh, on that you can see in the information planner you can see the total strength is 8 and total document is 10 you can see this you know, planner like so you can see total but if i sing sing it all it is also same uh, same 10 document but total strength is 15 so comparatively this mook uh, uh, sd as comparatively more strange that means it's more connected and their work may be citation a citation has been become more that's why the strength become more so like that you can identify who is the top influencer of your paper uh, of your area and which authors are collaborating and uh, which authors are not collaborating or there is less collaboration has been made you can approach to that author you can make a work further if you want to make a cluster wise analysis also you can do and i have seen that many couples also they are making cluster analysis by utilizing by combining slr with the bibliometric analysis so how to identify the cluster this is the item if you click you can give you there are seven uh, clusters cluster 1 these are the author uh, then cluster 2 these are the author cluster 3 these are the author so as you have already imported the uh, export uh, csv file in uh, google uh, jo, from the scopus you can easily identify these authors and manually you read and you can make a summarize of that because it is uh, difficult to read thousand articles at a time but you can at least by seeing the name you can see identify which are the more important cluster so you can identify the three or four cluster which is more suitable for you and you give a name and you do identify that this area what is the gap and this area what is the gap so accordingly you can frame different objectives also so this way you can make a cluster analysis and if you see the overlay visualization so you can see that if you want to who is the most recent work which author has recently worked on my topic you can see the scale represents from one year 2010 to 2018 so the yellow colors are uh, recent work and uh, uh, accordingly these blue colors are the old work you can identify it this is on the basis of number of uh, time frame wise the author and you can change it in the um, option panel like average citations if i put then you can see that this mook uh, comparatively citation more than 60 so that's why it is comparatively low and those are below or 10 or around 10 there so you can refer easily uh, refer those articles who have cited 
so sites means they may be some good work they have already done you can manually so it will reduce your slr activity to a greater extent also and sometimes average citation is not uh, good you can normalize also normalize means it will uh, because different domain have different citation pattern or something so that's why it will normalize normalize means it will normalize in the way like what is the citation of this author divided by total average citation of so far is collected so through uh, this way also you can further uh, identify the different kinds of author similarly you can see density visualization also as you see that density visualization where the the work is more prominent it is yellow and uh, comparatively it fades out so you can see the smoke is is appearing more prominent in this area so i will follow this the smoke uh, is the for my purpose of my research i follow its work it may be the pioneering work because it's more highly cited so from that i will migrate it and here also you can see cluster density also you can find these are one cluster this is another cluster this is another cluster so you can do and uh, in this cluster there are few number of work conducted accordingly you can uh, switch over to that so this is about your author wise uh, analysis and if you want to see further then uh, you go to again create because you have one time you have imported no need to take further steps you directly suppose i want to know organization wise also you can put uh, organization or let's say country so country wise if you put then it's saying that minimum number of a document of a country if you put 5 or you can see 3 2 because i know that most of the is india so we from that we can able to identify which are the collaborating countries you work in with the india in scopus analysis we can only identify uh, which are country are collaborating but which country is collaborating with uh, another country that data we cannot able to identify from the scopus database analysis but that we can able to identify from this uh, those software so once i finish suppose i know that india is the most dominant you can able to see other so let put here yes. then you can see india is the highest so from india who is the collab to india work is similar with the south korea work switzerland work and indonesia work so they are maybe working in the similar paper same paper but if you see that that there are certain country who is quite distant that means there is a less relationship between these uh, country means india and uh, this country like canada also few number work and next prominent is united states so india and united states are closely work together that means authors of india and united states are working closely to this sme uh, topic so like that you can identify different cluster in the basis of country wise because each color represent different kinds of you can identify the year wise also you can see that which country is currently working that indonesia and uh, bahrain is uh, working most uh, prominently in this video similarly let me uh, go to uh, another analysis like that you can play uh, different options so co occurrence analysis so friends uh, suppose okay, i want to okay okay before you proceed somebody is asking a very interesting question he says yes, uh, subhash is pradhan he has yeah. a question he is saying that is it possible to analyze and find out there are studies which are repeated and, but it doesn't have any impact yeah somebody is doing a kind of studies but it doesn't have any impact so is it possible to find out locate those kind of studies yes sir sir impact means i i understand that the number of citation means i can understand there is a impact right so uh, you can see the number of documents if some author is uh, highly the number of document is high but citation is very less so in this way i think we can solve that problem so yeah, uh, indirect, indirectly indirectly you can find out that right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sir in that case we will get an isolated spot not connected that is possible ah uh, that possible right <laughs> yes sir but we can identify the strength like uh, who's are uh, not cited maybe they have two three or cited but their number of article one or three is very huge less but few of them are connected that means few of them are uh, cited so that means uh, it's not most influencing author but if you see another author maybe the number of document less but uh, the citation is more it may be have more influence but both we are considering both the documents as well as the citation and use background of some statistical analysis 
from by taking weight of both and it will show you the yeah, uh, the graph so i think that way we can uh, indirectly just like i agree with professor manas sir that you can do the analysis so now i am dealing with keyword analysis let me go back to show you what i have done so co occurrence analysis there are different keywords all keywords and author keyword and index keyword author keyword means the, in that article if you see the below part there is a at, uh, keyword that is called as author keyword index keyword means uh, if you uh, submit in good journal while you submitting also the journal itself uh, ask you some different index uh, keywords like that is already predefined you need to select that also and all keywords means it will take all the both these keywords as well as the keyword from title abstract or something but for time being i am showing you from authors keyword so let me proceed so it will ask you minimum number of occurrence of a keyword that means at least how many times that keyword has been occurred so that you take into analysis so if you want to uh, reduce your you can select more or you can uh, as per your you can change the threshold limit so let's say let it be 5 for example and you can put next and uh, you can also filter it out for example i know that i am studying in india so india obviously come as a keyword but uh, right now i am reducing i am uh, removing that like that you can go filtering on all i can check it out can uh, see a uh, different uh, kind of keyword so once you select the keyword then put finish then yes yeah that's the interesting story so you can see that uh, which uh, keywords is quite a distance so from that you can able to identify what is the where is there is a gap you can see industry 4.0 and sme is not a strong connection that means it's not very much close though it is a close uh, maybe uh, like that let me check some other like total quality of management is uh, it is related to sme but not uh, connected to the higher uh, network similarly there are some quite repetition small and medium enterprise you can remove that also like uh, you can see uh, like uh, i have already analyzed this topic also there is some like sme ipos there is a few number of work has already done on sme ipos because the recent phenomena uh, like six sigma is not a very work has been done you can do such kind of analysis or you can go back also you can try to rate further so from there you can identify which uh, keywords are least research and you can identify the gap so like industry 4.0 it's a recent phenomenon and uh, how many works has been connected and you can able to identify that also similarly i will go to the another analysis like citation analysis in citation i wise the uh, document wise i will add sources wise i will uh, make analysis of organization wise country wise author wise also i can identify who is the most influential author of that uh, journal you can see so it is already i am exceeding time that's one quite uh, uh, speed that's why but you can experiment this all the things once you exposed to you can understand that Uh, another thing is that if you want to uh, make it uh, rotate also with your visualization you can do you can rotate as per your want you can make it flip wise you can make flip horizontally or you can rotate as per your convenience you can do you can change the color of your cluster also the cluster colors you can change so here you can i think clearly visible that uh, deshmukh sd is a uh, highly cited influence in author and uh, who are the list uh, influence author and who are the other authors who are collaborating with your most influential author or connected to your uh, highly influencing authors work so accordingly you can able to identify and just like i already told you can identify the roster also you can able to do you can overlay visualization you can see the recent author who is working on that area and you can follow their work because they might have uh, given some new contribution so that you can uh, make a future scope where the, what is the limitation of these authors work and you can make a further analysis uh, from the density visualization also you can see what are the different cluster also available 
we are uh, going back to next you can see suppose bibliographic coupling on the basis of uh, sources sources means these which journals are mostly bibliographic coupled uh, or you can say authors you can say organization country for example again i am selecting the author because it is easy to understand you can see that so the number of uh, size is more that means the number of uh, you can say coupling is more as already told in my explanation so you can make a analysis of that so each point you can analyze you can report you can uh, derive what is the uh, gap in that area similarly uh, there is a co citation analysis also on the basis of reference on the basis of source on the basis of authors also you can source means journal let's say finish so here we can find the small and business economics or which journal is more prominent you can also easily international journal of production or something this journal is more prominent journal of clean productivity journal of marketing strategic management journal journal of international business so like that you can identify who is the top most journal and you can target this journal on the basis of their uh, you can you can do that so you 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 will uh, able to easily identify that this are the uh, my journal where i can publish my work also. so this way you can do analysis for the bibliometric analysis and you can export that data the approach is quite comprehensive but due to time constraint i am uh limit myself with this uh, bibliometric analysis and here i am uh, highlighting some of the uh, work uh, which you can uh, i have already conducted on the barampur university so as i already told you when you see the barampur university jo when you go to the scopus database there are three ways you can uh, uh, take your data one is a document wise then author wise another is affiliation wise so i choose affiliation wise because i want all the authors from the barampur university so similarly if you want to analyze uh, all the in top 10 university of india you can make a bibliometric analysis you can pay uh, publish it if you want to particular journal let's say i have seen many journals are going to complete its uh, 50 years or 100 years so on the that you can also uh, select a particular uh, journal name also you can make a bibliometric analysis on particular that journal or you can make analysis of particular institution or particular author so here i have selected barampur university and as you see that once i click the barampur university i get 1837 document till now so i can easily say that these there are 1837 document uh, already uh, have been already published in the scopus database by the authors of barampur university maybe uh, there are the other authors but there are some collaboration with the barampur university authors so this way uh, and if you put the similar way put all then you can get the data so here i am showing some interesting fact you can see the journey of uh, publishing in scopus database of barampur university starting from 1971 and slowly slowly it is increasing and particularly you can see it increased in the year 2011 then it is fall down again it is 16 onwards maybe increases so maybe uh, now it is going to reduce in trend maybe some of the faculty who are already worked and they may be get retired or maybe uh, the collaboration has been reduced that's why it is comparatively less but now it will still it is on uh, some already some already in uh, not uh, that much drastically again i hope it will be increase so that is the trend of bibliometry uh, trend of uh, research productivity of barampur university and you can see who is the top most journal where our authors are publishing you can see indian journal of geo marine sciences uh, the highest number of article produced is 35 and uh, experimental gynecology uh, uh, and similarly physical uh, review b like indian journal of marine science these are the journals uh, already as the top most journal who in which our authors are publishing you can export this data you can present in a different way because here only i am uh, showing only top 10 journal name but if you export you can get the exhaustive list similarly who are the top author of our barampur university you can see that the top author uh, in the scopus database so far published is uh, mr r k maybe he is a professor r k mr sir then followed by manas patra sir patnaik bk and uh, like that you can say tripathi gs 
Mohanty Pikke, I think Pikke Mohanty sir. So these are the uh, total number of journals are produced uh, uh, so far in the scope of database in our our uh, contributor. So maybe some professors have joined in a Barabar Institute quite later. So there there may be some fragments or no, there may be some breakup. But suppose I up to associate professor I work in the another university, then I switch over to Barabar University. So my publication now divided. So all your publication is contribution to that my old university and my recent contribution to this university will be uh, from the uh, about the publication which I published after joining. So that way also some publication get uh, reduced also. So these are the authors. Then what are the collaborating institution which are uh, making collaboration uh, with our authors for publishing the various articles? You can see the top collaborating institution is National Institute of Science and Technology. I think it is the NIST Barampur and then is Utka University, Indian National Center for Ocean Information, then Calicut College, Jadavpur University, National Institute of Technology, Rahul Kala, KIIT, Physical Research Laboratory. This is the top 10 only. So from that you can also identify so which authors, uh, from which institution our author is more closely associated. So you can uh, uh, frame different uh, strategy or you can frame different uh, uh, work uh, for them also. And uh, what type of uh, document mostly our authors are publishing. So you can see that most of our articles are confined to articles. So there may be like a review paper, there may be a book, there may be others, but uh, you can see the articles is dominated. So journal articles are produced. And uh, what are the other authors who, who are already worked with uh, our authors from different countries? You can see as already uh, seen my SMEs also here the similar. So United States, uh, our authors are quietly closely worked with the United States and the Canada, Germany, Japan, like that. And uh, what are the subjects? Which subjects? So you can see there are different subjects like physical and astronomy, physics and uh, astronomy, engineering. Uh, biochemistry, computer science department. So these are the various department. Uh, you can understand that uh, which department actually contributing more in our development of research of our institutions, and which department actually lacking. So that we can uh, 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 make uh, some analysis of that. We can provide them right platform, or we can uh, understand uh, what are the weakness so that we can improve. Right. And similarly, you can see other also in other. Uh, Business and management accounting also is coming and 25 and social sciences 79, material science like that. So what are the funding of sponsors? So who is the uh, top funding sponsor who actually funding the Barampur University? You can see Department of Science and Technology, UGC, uh, then Council of Scientific, uh, Ministry of Arts Science, University Grant Committee. So maybe someone has given commission, someone has given highly the submitting the article in the university grant committee that so it is showing two otherwise it would be uh, large enough so like that bangladesh council department of atomic energy uh, department of science and technology so these are the top funding sponsors so accordingly we can understand that uh, so who is the top funding sponsor and uh, which are not so we can target the other funding agency or we can see the top this funding agency because uh, this will help us to motivate us uh, to work further and I want to show also uh, the bibliometric analysis of our Barampur University. So I will ask uh, Professor Manasar sir is it I will show or it is okay that uh, here I will stop because I have already exceeded the time. Yeah, that's okay. It's already late. I think now number of participants also have reduced to uh, half of that. Yes, we are there somewhere around 80. Now it's come down to 40. It's okay. I think to start with, uh, this is uh, a heavy dose. <laughs> Those are doing for the first time. Yeah. That, that's okay. Yeah, sir. So thank you, sir. For what we uh, think, we become what we think. <laughs> so yeah, you, you can just conclude. You can conclude. So yes, uh, so with this I will conclude my session. Uh, thank you for your present listening. So I, I strongly uh, recommend that is only a exploration. You can explore it more. You experiment. You try to read more article on the bibliometric paper. You can know to understand the functionality. And uh, if you follow the more article, you can also understand the right approach to report these uh, things in a uh, paper. And you can uh, surely publish a good article in within a short period of time. As well as you can able to find your research area. So with this, I will stop my uh, presentation uh, and I uh, request <coughs> Professor Manasar to take it first. So yeah. thank, thank you. Th
you. Thank you, Sakti, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, starting from scratch, you have really taken us through the entire journey of how uh, with a very interesting demo. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that the research scholar, those who are present today, uh, must have been greatly benefited by this presentation. I don't know what you, you have been doing. Uh, if you are just six months old, a researcher, or one year or two years, how uh, how you are really finding out the related work? I have no idea. So different different people they follow different methods. But I, I understand this is a wonderful way of positioning your research uh, in a global domain, uh, so that you know that where you are, where do you stand. Uh, I can see that uh, in order to really do this kind of thing manually, as we used to do when we were doing a research, it would take about uh, at least a year. But then also you will not be satisfied uh, because you will not be able to see uh, or you will not be able to refer to all the journals, all the related things. But now that you have a tool and you have access to all kinds of digital contents, resources, so this is uh, very quickly probably uh, within a month or so you will be able to uh, find out who all working in this area. Uh, how uh, your work is related to others, what are the uh, mostly referred papers, what are the uh, mostly referred and most influential uh, authors, and so on and so forth. I think the, the way he demonstrated, uh, it speaks uh, enough. I don't have to uh, add anything to that. But I'm sure that uh, at least the research scholars should take benefit of this tool, make the best use of it. If you are in the beginning, in the early stage of your research, uh, maybe you can contact him again. Uh, he will be able to demonstrate and uh, help you to uh, use the tool. But as I know, it's very simple. It's all manual driven. You can experiment, you can play around and uh, make the best out of uh, this tool and find out where you are uh, in the area in which you are planning to do your research or you have already moved ahead with your research. Now, if you have some questions, uh, please, uh, any of the participants, maybe the research scholars to start with. Uh, we can ask you questions. It's already 4.30. But still,